Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you everything you need to know about the 2020 John Deere E110, and then at the end, we'll give you a short driving demo. So let's get started. All right, guys, let's start with getting underneath the hood. First thing I'd point out is just how easy it is to open. You know, it's heavy enough that it's gonna stay down, but it's also super easy to open with one hand. And one thing about that being is that there is no latch to hold this down. When you are gonna be moving this mower, maybe you're pulling it onto the back of a trailer, or maybe you're putting it in the back of your pickup, you always wanna pull this mower on facing forward, going in the direction you travel, because if it's spun around backwards, that wind may catch this hood and fly it open since it's not latched down. So you may just keep that in mind. But guys, right here underneath the hood, first First thing I'd point out, it's going to be our service interval panel here. This is where you're going to go to remind yourself of when to perform those, to perform those certain services here. Uh, one thing also that I always like to point out is under the eight hour service interval, it does not show here that we need to change our oil. Rather, it's going to show to change that oil yearly or every 50 hours. But guys, with these brand new mowers, with these engines being in that break-in stage, always go ahead and change that oil after the first eight hours. It's just a great practice to be in. Get that break-in oil out, get that new oil in so you're good to go to mow throughout the year. So next guys, looking down right here underneath the hood, we've got our 19 horsepower John Deere branded engine. Now this is not a John Deere built engine. If you look right over here on the side of the hood, you will see that this is a Briggs and Stratton engine. Now one thing also is this is a single cylinder engine. So in the E110s and the E100s, we have single cylinder engines in these models. And then once we jump up to the E120, we go to that V twin or dual still in cylinder engine. So guys, also right here while we're looking under the hood, let's talk about key service points. We'll start over here on the left-hand side. Two things we have here is gonna be our oil filter and our fuel filter. One thing I always like to point out on these models about where our oil filter is, is just the, how close in proximity it is to our carburetor here. So when you're taking off your oil filter here, if you're using a strap style filter wrench, you know, it may be uh, big and bulky. And whenever you're turning that over, on that on that filter to loosen it you may get a little close here to your carburetor so you just want to be careful not to slip and damage that as that can be something that happens i'm telling you from experience guys so make sure and watch that whenever you're changing that filter next thing i'd point out here guys is going to be the air filter housing right on top here so it's just real easy to get into we just have two hand turning locks here just turn those to the unlock position pull it off and replace that filter Next thing guys is gonna be our spark plug and it's gonna be right around here on the front of the engine. So it's gonna be right here as you can see this cap. Now, one thing I'd point out about this while we're here at the front is notice the proximity of this spark plug to our muffler and exhaust tube here. So guys, I know if you're, if you're going through and you're doing a full service, you're probably gonna warm that engine up to get that oil nice, you know, nice and warm so it drains easier. Just keep in mind that you're gonna wanna let it cool back down before we go to mess with our spark plug so you don't happen to burn your hand on that exhaust tube or muffler there. Moving back here, guys, we have our oil drain here, very nicely positioned, comes all the way out to the side of the frame, and you have plenty of room underneath to put your drain pan so you don't have that spillage all over the side of the frame. And then also on top here, we have our fill. It's yellow and indicated by this symbol here, so you know that is where the engine oil goes. And then also we have our dipstick there. So right there, guys, where we're gonna check our oil, right between those two arrows is where we wanna be, more towards the top. So nice and easy to see and get to there. And then last but not least, guys, we have our battery tucked nicely back behind here. As you can see, it's held in by a zip tie. This is just for shipping purposes. So once you get your mower, you can go ahead and cut that off because you'll see right back here, it does have this plastic box that is gonna be holding it into place while you're traveling. Now that we've seen everything underneath the engine, let's go ahead and get in the operator station. So before I hop on, a couple of things I'd point out is gonna be the seat for one here, guys. We've got an 11 inch back seat here, super plush. As you can see, lots of cushion there. It is gonna be suspended back here with this spring system. It's also gonna have a seat switch here. This is going to allow the mower to know that there is somebody in the operator station. That way, if there's not, it will turn the blades off to the mower to keep you safe when you're off the mower. This is also gonna be an adjustable seat. So you're gonna have five and a half inches of adjustment 
fore and aft, which is nice if you're a bigger person, might give you some more room. Um, and the another, another thing, guys, is just how easy it is to get onto these tractor style mowers rather than a zero turn. You don't have that deck that you're going to have to jump over, you know, or step over, and you've got plenty of room here that you have, or plenty of space that you can have three points of contact. So maybe you're somebody that has mobility issues. Um, you do have these points of contact, and you're not having to step over something large to get in. So as I get in, guys, like I talked about with that adjustable seat, I've got plenty of room here between me and the steering wheel. You know, I'm about 5'10", 275, you know, so I'm a bigger guy, and I've got plenty of room here with that seat all the way back that I have room that I am comfortable when driving this mower. Sometimes in those zero turns, those sticks come up, and even with the seat all the way back, they're right here. They're uncomfortable to try to go in reverse, whereas you don't have that issue here in the tractor style mowers. So guys, starting over here at the left, we'll talk first about our deck height lever here. Now, as you notice, you have positions in quarter inch increments all the way from four down to one inch. And we do have those notches in between each setting so you can pick in quarter inch intervals how high you want to cut. Now, one thing I would also point out, guys, is just how easy it is to raise and lower this deck. It is going to be spring assisted, super easy just to bring over and to lower or to raise with that spring assist like I said it's not much effort at all so you know if you're somebody that maybe doesn't have much strength in your arms um, don't be scared of this mower don't be scared of having to do this by hand it is super easy it's also just as easy to do when you're on the go so maybe you're out here in an area like this where you've got uneven terrain you're needing to switch from those heights fast as you're going along just know guys that it is super easy to do so keep that in mind now moving forward here, we do have our brake here on the left hand side. We do not have a clutch on this tractor. This is going to be a hydrostatic transmission, so this is truly just a brake. So when you're going along and mowing, if you need to brake, you do have that. And also right now, it is set in our parking brake position. So this lever is up and it's fully depressed. So to release that, we're going to go ahead and push in and then lower down our lever here. And it releases that brake and turns it into a, two, a true brake. Also guys, keep in mind though, whenever we are using that parking function, you are gonna have to go ahead and push this all the way as far as it will go. As if you only push it part way, this won't go into position. You do have to push it all the way in to get it up and into that parking position. So now guys, moving up here onto the dash, first thing I'd point out right here is gonna be our RIO button. So this is our rear implement option button. And what that means is, is that in these mowers, if you want to mow in reverse, you have the mower going, the blades are on. If you try to go in reverse without pushing this button, it will kill that mower deck. That's just a safety feature to make sure that you don't accidentally run over something behind you and you're not paying attention. So having this button where you have to push it first just makes you pay attention to the fact that you are gonna mow in reverse, making sure that you're watching and paying attention to what you're doing. So just keep in mind, if you wanna mow in reverse, we have to push this button first. Now moving up here, we do have our throttle. As you notice, it's just a single lever. We do not have a separate choke lever here, but you'll notice right here in this position, it's saying cold start position. So if we're gonna be choking this mower, starting it uh, you know, after it's been sitting a while, we're gonna push all the way forward here and then start the mower. But then also notice whenever I let off, it does move back here to the max run position. So it does have a spring that's gonna keep you from staying in that choke position. So nice feature there. As we move across here, guys, next thing I'd point out is we do have our hour meter here, and it is gonna give you service interval reminders. We have this little picture of this grease gun here. So when it's time for one of those service intervals to come about, it will flash you up an icon there, letting you know that it is time to do some type of service. Now moving down here, next thing we've got is going to be our PTO or blade engagement lever. Now this is a manual lever, so whenever you're going to turn your blades on, you're gonna simply raise this lever up, it'll lock into that top position. And what that's doing is it's pulling a cable underneath that's pulling a pulley tight and making that belt wrap around your drive pulley underneath as your drive is constantly going, as soon as the mower's on, that drive is on and it's constantly going, except your belt is loose until you push this lever forward, which tightens that belt around the drive, therefore starting your blades. So very easy to do, just something that you know is a little different. If you're used to the pop button to the electric style that's usually over here on the side, if you want that feature to just 
raise up and turn those blades on, you'll have to jump up to the E140. So keep that in mind, the E100, the 110, the 120, and 130 are all gonna have this manual lever. Now moving over here, looking right here, one thing I always like to point out is these mowers are built in Greenville, Tennessee in the USA. So pretty cool feature there, guys. You know, in today's times, uh, very neat that these are all made in the USA and it does, they do like to boast about it as it's right there on the dash where you can see it. Moving back here, we do have our key switch. Uh, the only thing that I like to point out here about it is we do have a position for lights. So once we were to start this mower up, maybe we're gonna mow at night, you know, right there at dusk, we can turn it back here and go to our lights position. But be careful as you, whenever you go to stop this mower, you may forget and leave it in the lights position. Always make sure to go back all the way to that stop position. Now guys, moving down here, right below me is one thing I like to point out, or a couple of things rather, is gonna be our information panel here. It's gonna show you all of the controls there, uh, give you some information if you forget what these things are up on the dash and around your feet here. And then moving back here, we also have our fuel gauge. This is a float style fuel gauge. So you'll see there, it will float back into position however much fuel you have. And once again, guys, they boast about that made in USA right there. So. Moving over here to our right hand side. Now we talked about over here on the left that we do not have a clutch. So this is a hydrostatic transmission. So what that means is to drive this mower, we actually just have two pedals right over here on the right hand side. We have one for forward and one for reverse. So super easy drive function. And I'll also show how this works here at the end of the video in that driving demo. So just know guys that hydrostat, super easy to go forward and reverse, easy for operators maybe that haven't operated a mower before. Last but not least here, guys, over here on the right-hand side, we do have a little storage cubby here, and we also have a beverage holder right here, so you're mowing along on those hot days. You do have a cup holder to hold that. And I talked about this seat being adjustable, so right over here on this side is where that adjustment's gonna be. Simply raise up, and you can scoot forward or scoot back. And like I said there, guys, five and a half inches of slide gives you virtually enough room there, enough space to fit any operator that would need to operate this mower. So from here, guys, Let's go and talk about some things at the rear of the mower. All right guys, so back here at the rear of the mower is where these tractor style mowers are gonna set themselves apart from your average zero turn. Right out of the gate, guys, these mowers are meant to be versatile and to be able to add those attachments to. So right here, we have two holes here. Now guys, these aren't just holes, you know, to drain water or whatever. These are actually made for attachments. This is John Deere's cargo mount system. So right back here, we're able to mount such things as our bagger kit, uh, maybe that 15 gallon sprayer, sun canopy, all those different things. And then right up here at the front, we have another set of holes here that go with our cargo mount system that is gonna be for that all weather enclosure. You know, guys, if you're having to do some work out in the rain, snow, whatever it may be, you do have that option to add that all-weather enclosure. So, um, you know, plenty of attachability just right there at those two points. But then also, guys, right down here, we have standard built onto the tractor. We have this hitch here. It's going to be great for such things as those poly carts, you know, so you can move stuff around on your property. Maybe it be firewood or dirt, whatever that may be fertilizer spreaders, pull behind sprayers. So, you know, all these things, these mowers, these tractor style mowers are just ready for that versatility and that attachability. So they're not just made just for mowing grass, is, even though that is their primary function. They also have the ability to be that all purpose machine around your property. So make sure to pay attention to that, pay attention to the attachments that you can get for these things as they will optimize your operation. So a couple other things back here at the back, guys, is gonna be right here is where our fuel tank is. We do have that inch and three quarter opening there, so plenty of room for your average gas can. You've also got this tethered lid, so you're not gonna lose it. And then a plenty enough big opening here that if you have that spillage, it's not gonna puddle up and stay here on your fender deck. It will be able to fall out the back here. And then also guys, moving on down, we also have our transmission disengage rod. So you'll notice these two stickers here. And what these are saying is if that rod is pulled out, you're able to push this tractor, meaning that it's disengaged our transaxle here. So you're not trying to push against those gears, but then also whenever we're pushed in, this is where we're gonna be able to operate the tractor and be on it and drive it. So, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, it, should I be worried? Am I gonna have problems or issues? No, that's not what we're trying to say. But if we do have those issues where maybe we run out of gas and we're out in the middle of a field mowing, or we do have you know mechanical issues, at least we can use this lever to disengage that transaxle, take off our park brake, and then be able to get this mower pushed out of the way where it's not gonna be in the way on our property. So 
Next here, guys, let's go and talk a little bit about the mower deck. So let's talk a little bit about the deck over here on the left-hand side. First of all, we point out we do have, it is the Edge 42-inch cutting system. So on the E-Series mowers, um, each model is set with the type of, with the size of deck it's gonna have. So E100s have a 42, E110, 42, 120 is gonna be a 42, 130 is gonna be a 42. Now within those models, those tractors have different features, but if you wanna jump up to that 48 inch deck, you're gonna have to jump all the way to the E140. So right here on our 110, we do have that 42 inch deck. Now some of the features about this deck, one is gonna be we have anti-scalping wheels at the front on both sides. These are adjustable. You have positions here back on the back that you can adjust the scalping wheel up and down depending on what height you're gonna be cutting at. Now also here we have a washout port. This is gonna be great for cleaning out underneath that deck. We can hook our water hose up here, lower this deck all the way to the ground on a concrete surface, turn the water on, turn the blades on. The suction that that deck will create up off that concrete will help to clean that deck, on, clean that deck out underneath. So very nice feature there. Also right here are spindle covers. Now, a lot of people ask us about these. They wanna be able to take these off to make it easier for cleaning the deck on top. But guys, I will say that on these E-Series mowers with this type of cutting system, you do have to leave these spindle covers on because not only are they covers for protecting, but you'll notice these notches right here on the sides. These notches here are actually what's helping keep that belt in place in that pulley system because that belt is not always tight as we talked about. This has a manual PTO that actually tightens that belt. So if I reach underneath here, you can see just how loose this belt actually is here on the drive until I reach up and pull the lever here. And then now it is in mow function. You can see that it's tight. So if it's loose up here, you can only imagine that it's loose back here on your back pulleys. So you have to have these covers on to keep that belt into those pulleys. So just keep that in mind. Um, also guys, these spindles are gonna be greased over here on this side. You can actually go in, in this hole here and get inside to the grease circuit there. Now that is actually going to be sealed bearings in these spindles, but what that grease is doing is keeping moisture purged out from the middle of that spindle. So it is still important, even though those bearings are sealed, to keep that grease, to keep that moisture from damaging the shaft inside that spindle. So from here guys, let's go ahead and move over to the right hand side, talk a little bit about the features over there. Over here on the right hand side, guys, just a few things, you know, like we pointed out before, we do have our spindle cover. You know, you are gonna have to keep that on. You're also gonna have grease points underneath where you're gonna need to grease these spindles. Uh, right up here, guys, we actually have these two little black um, column type things here. And I'm not exactly sure what these are for. I don't know if people use these, you know, to pull the deck out from underneath once they have it, you know, undone. I actually use it for wrapping the belt around to keep it tight whenever I am doing, you know, blade change, uh, blade, ch blade changes on these mowers. So, you know, if you guys know exactly what those are for, uh, drop me a comment below as I'd really appreciate to know what exactly those are for. Um, but anyways, moving on out here, we do have our discharge chute here and it is spring loaded. Now, one question that we get about these is, what is the actual width of this deck because I'm trying to make a decision if I can get this mower through my gate. So great question. Um, and to answer that, whenever this is all the way up right here, you're gonna measure right at 50 inches. Um, so that is gonna be your widest point whenever you still have this on. Now, if you were to go ahead and take your discharge chute off and you were going from the edge of the deck to your other edge, you're about 45 inches. So maybe that'll help anybody that's looking into this mower and needing to know the width, you know, getting into their backyard, getting through those gates. That is what you're looking at. Now, a couple other things here moving forward is we do have that anti-scalping wheel like we talked about before. So just make sure that you're adjusting it to the same as the one on the other side. And then a couple of things here at the front, guys, that we need to mention is other service points, which are gonna be these grease points here. One on this side, one on the other side, and one right in the middle above that hanger where you're gonna make that deck adjustment. We just need to make sure that we're taking care of this front axle as it's doing a lot of the work. It's doing the turning, it's taking the brunt of the force, so we need to be making sure and taking care of that. So from here, guys, I'll go ahead and hop on and give you a short driving demo. All right, guys, so to start the mower up, first thing we're gonna do is put our foot on the brake over here on the left-hand side. Go ahead and raise that throttle up, and if it's been sitting a while, go ahead and put it up into the cold start position. Start it up. 
right there you saw it come back out of that choke position to where it's in full rev you know so you can hear it all the way revved up there guys now what i'm going to do is i'm going to push in and relieve my parking brake here and i'll just show you how the pedals work here in the front first and then we'll actually turn the blades on and mow so if i want to go forward it's as simple as just pushing forward and then if I want to go in reverse, it's as simple as pushing back here. Now, if I want to go ahead and start mowing, I'm going to dial back just a little bit here. I'm going to raise my lever up to start my blades. So as you hear those kick in, then go ahead and raise back up into full throttle. And then I'm going to lower down here to about two inches and go ahead and mow here so you can see how this mower does mowing. before there may be those times where you want to mow in reverse so in that instance i'm going to have to push on my rio button here i'm going to push that down and then start to go in reverse and then i can release that button and my blades stay on now if i decided to try to mow in reverse without pushing it you can hear right there where it killed it's going to kill the entire mower so we'll go ahead and turn those blades off Right there guys is going to be your demo driving demo on the e110 now after seeing this demo guys and after watching this video um, hopefully you've seen everything you need to see if you're trying to make a decision on whether this mower is for you to purchase now maybe you already have one of these mowers um, you're looking for a little more information and if you are guys just know that I've already done a video on how to service this mower how to change the blades and remove the deck and reinstall the deck and also how to level the deck. So you can check those out guys. Uh, also put those in the link or in the description below. Um, also guys, maybe you're looking into this because you have this mower. Maybe you're looking for parts and things for it. I'll also put a link in the description below where you can go to buy those parts directly from me. And also guys, if you have any other John Deere parts mower needs, make sure to check us out at west-equip.com parts. And if this video helps you out or you like this video, make sure to hit that like button hit that subscribe and show us some love as that helps me out as well. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Let's go. Woo! Hey guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and go buy your parts at west-equip.com parts.